And as somebody who was raised Catholic, and I believe in God, when I think of an altar, I think of Jesus. So yeah. it wasn't until working with you a little bit more and getting to know your work and reading your book that I heard about altars. So what is an altar in your words? And how can we use altars to manifest more of what we want and make more progress? Yeah. Well, first, I appreciate you drawing the connotation to religion, because that's a lot of my work is helping people reframe and redefine words like altar, like ritual in a non-religious context, but a more spiritual context. And I love to have those conversations and not enough people ask me that question and, <laughs> and talk about the religious connotation. So I'm going to answer your question, but I also want to say that um, if you consider yourself spiritual, non-religious, a lot of the religious programming that you have growing up, I was also raised Catholic, will sometimes transfer to these non-religious practices and your own spirituality that you're developing. And so it's good to look out for that if there have been negative experiences or negative hmm. associations. It kind of gets projected on the new thing and it might create the fear or the blocks to the manifestation, to the creation. So hmm. I don't, I just wanted to mention that since you brought up you know, briefly religion. I know it wasn't directly your, your question. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like to simplify these definitions. So to me, an altar is a space, a, a sacred space in which you use to do ritual work or manifestation work. It's got to be treated with reverence. It's got to be, um, yeah, I mean, that's basically it. Any space that you create that's treated <laughs> with reverence. And so we even call my store and why we have physical brick and mortar and why that's important to me, that's an altar. We actually have referred to it as like, this is the mm. altar of modern mystic. It's a spiritual space created with reverence um, for the purpose of transformation and, and, and growth and healing. Uh, so that's, that's sort a of how spiritual I space altars. of reverence mm -hmm. used for transformation and healing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I think many things can be an altar and then I love altar work. And that's why I loved working with you. Cause you're like, create this little corner as an expression of yourself. And I made it an altar yeah. because I think an altar does a few things. Uh, number one, a lot of this work that we're doing with energy, and you probably know a lot about this, energy is so, I don't want to say it's intangible to a degree. Yeah. Like you can feel it, but it's intangible. So altar spaces, I think, anchor the energy, create mm. intentional um, spaces for you to focus your energy and desire. Because I think a lot of magic and manifestation is also to do with your psyche and your beliefs and what you reinforce. And I think these altar spaces can reinforce your goals and your desires. I think that altar spaces can create dedicated space for you that also tells your spirit and your mind, I'm important. This mm -hmm. is mine. Like this is carved out in this whole big wide world. Even if it's just like a one foot little corner, this is, this is for me. Um, and then when you use it as a ritual working space, it creates more specific results for certain targets and goals that you're trying to um, manifest for yourself and create. I'm trying to think of them. Oh, and then I had a teacher once. I thought this was interesting and I know it's spelled differently, but an alter, an A-L-T-A-R can mm. alter, A-L-T-E-R, your consciousness. It can mm. change and alter your consciousness by the repetition by the reminder, by the intentionality that you use to create that space. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, and that is why I teed this up and said it's totally complimented because I say when you feng shui, you give your space attention with intention. Mm -hmm. And maybe what I do is more macro. And it's funny because I always thought I was getting as micro as you could get once we get from outside landscape forms to inside office. But you're getting even more micro by saying like, this altar is for me, this space, this even like corner of my corner office, right, mm -hmm. is for me. And this like reminder, I say you set up your space like a 3D vision board and you use the energy, you align your office, let's say, with the energy in your space. But your altar is like even more of a representation and like a trigger, a positive trigger as you're walking through the space. Like this is 
what I'm looking for. This is what I want. This is what's working out for me. It's like a nice little moment and reminder. And you, and for me, I engage with it on a daily basis. So it's also like a space to do that work. So Mm. every morning, and there's multiple kinds of altars. I have many altars in my space, but for the primary one that I work with on a daily basis, that's where I'm sitting and I'm pulling my cards and I'm doing my meditation and I'm doing my journaling. I'm lighting my candle. I'm lighting the incense. And those products that come from Modern Mystic have also layers of ingredients and intentionality to reinforce through sight, through smell, through just herb, um, herbalism, et cetera, uh, that intention that I'm working on. Um, and then so, there's other, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on that note, people have feng shui their space. So whether, can you tell us or share with us, because then you and I have feng shui your office. Can mm-hmm. you share with people how you have an altar in your space and how you've combined the two, like how you merged it? What can people take away from this altar con- question? 